Welcome to another episode of Kumble Corner. I am Super Joshi, joined by Karan Mehta and Knuckle Pandey. Um, and if you like this show and you're a fan of it, don't forget to hit subscribe um, below. If you're on YouTube uh, and wherever you get this podcast, uh, podcast app on Apple, Spotify, whatever, something that I don't even know exists yet. And follow us on social media, Instagram, X, uh, just search Kumble Corner. That's obviously both with K's. Um, so it's been a, a busy week, a busy few days. Um, there's obviously a T20 World Cup going on uh, for the ladies and a series going on for the men's with Bangladesh, who uh, they recently kind of went T20 in a test match. Um, in Sunday, let's start with ladies first. Sunday gone, um, the ladies beat the neighbours to the west, Pakistan, and the men beat the neighbours to the east, not Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, and uh, let's start there, Nakul Pandey. Yeah, they, uh, so India off the back of running into the best New Ze- performance in New Zealand to put in for a very, very long time. New Zealand were one of the worst performing teams coming into the World Cup, smashed home and away by by England uh, and really heavily reliant on a few players. But they um, turned it on against India in a World Cup, obviously. Yeah, and, and India really didn't. And they they looked like they were really struggling to find a a batting approach uh and kind of the same thing happened against uh against pakistan so they bowled uh, uh pakistan batted first um made only 105 uh aren't that the ready terrific uh the third, the second seamer uh taking taking three for 19 uh taking the, the important wickets when it uh mattered um if you haven't seen the highlights, or even if you have, because it's worth looking again, uh, Fatima Sana, the Pakistan captain, who was uh, superb in their first game, uh, she fell to one of the best catches by a wicketkeeper I've ever seen by Richard Ghosh, uh, standing up to the stumps. Incredible catch. Uh, Sarah Taylor levels of, of athleticism up to the stumps. Uh, and then India made things harder than they needed to be. Uh <laughs> Really, with the uh, with the bat, uh, Shafali Verma started really well in the power play and then got slowed down uh, and ended up getting out for an underrunnable thirty. Jamima Rodrigue, similar, didn't hit a boundary, was uh, dismissed for uh, an underrunnable, well under a runnable uh, twenty. Richard Ghosh fell the very next ball. Fatima Sana uh, again doing her. Uh, doing her thing, and at that point, India were eighty for four, uh, and in danger of sort of sleepwalking their way to defeat. And it took uh, it took Herman Preet to to get India uh, over the line. She uh, managed to uh, to hit a few boundaries on an incredibly slow uh, pitch in in Dubai. Uh, injured herself very nearly very near the end of that game, uh, and India stumbled over the line. And had the points on the board, but then basically needed a, a huge net run rate boost uh, against against Sri Lanka today. They started the the game second bottom in terms of net run rate with a big negative net run rate, uh, and they absolutely hammered Sri Lanka to the point that they are now second in the group, just ahead of Pakistan on on net run rate. Um, the batters fired. Which they haven't done for the entire entire tournament. They 172 for three, the highest score by anyone in the tournament so far. Uh, doubly impressive because that was the second game uh, in in Dubai uh, on that day. Uh, Shafali and Shafali Verma and Smriti Mandana put on nearly 100. Uh, Mandana batted magnificently, uh, both in and out of the power play. Those inside out cover drives that she plays uh, down the ground brilliantly. It took a silly run out for her to. Uh, to fall, Shafali Verma uh, showed that on a slow pitch, power is power yard. Uh, she <laughs> hit the ball over the infield uh, if you can't hit the ball through the infield and put Sri Lanka on the defensive. Uh, There's a then, girl who's had complain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, um, she make she uh, forty three or forty doesn't seem like that good in the innings, but uh, she started uh, really strong while Smriti Mandana was trying to find her feet. Uh, and they those two complement each other so well. They've been uh, they've been terrific uh, for India in the last uh, year or so since the last World Cup. And then Harmanpreet uh, found found her form. She was picking up uh, the Sri Lankan bowlers over the infield, 
Uh, every time Sri Lanka moved a fielder, she'd hit the ball where the fielders had just come from. Uh, she made uh, Chamari Athapathu change her bowlers all the time. Uh, Sri Lanka ended up using uh, seven different bowlers over the course of uh, over the course of the game. Uh, Amar Kanchana, in particular, got a, uh, I mentioned her. So she came in to the side for Sri Lanka and uh, had already conceded five runs before she bowled her first legitimate ball uh, with uh, with no balls and and wides and stuff. And it kind of got worse uh, from there. Uh, and she ended up with fifty two off uh, off twenty seven balls to to make sure that uh, India got. Uh, got over 170 which was always going to be a. I know in, uh, Sri Lanka did chase down a decent score in the Asia Cup final but really Radha Yadha took, who was on the uh, who was on the pitch as a sub fielder for Harmanpreet who batted and then didn't field so presumably is still a little bit injured and so took captain's prerogative to not field at all in the second innings uh, Radha Yadha came on and took an incredible catch at second ball then Chamari Athapathu, who is Sri Lanka's best player, one of the very best players in the world, is not having a very good tournament, unfortunately, uh, for her. She got out in the next over. Harshita Samara Vikrama, who is also uh, a very important player for Sri Lanka, got out. And Sri Lanka was six for three after in the third over. And really, the game was done at that point. Uh, all of India's bowlers were, were excellent. Renika Singh at the top of the order. Uh, and then Arundhati Reddy and... Uh, Asha Sobna, so the seam and uh, finger spin uh, with Sri Lanka and Duthi Sharma and uh, and the uh, and the spin of Asha uh, with, with her legs with her leg breaks. India put their foot on the throat and never never let it off. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka Sri stumbled what to ninety odd all out. Uh, ninety all out, eighty two run win, uh, and India are now second. Uh, Behind uh, behind Australia with only Australia to play, um, cheeky little net, net run rate booster. Yeah, absolutely. So they're now they're now above Pakistan on on net run rate, and Sri Lanka are all but out of the tournament. Three wins, uh, three games, three losses. Horrifying uh, net run rate. Uh, having been one of the best teams in the world or form teams in the world coming into the tournament, a real a real disappointment for uh, for them. So you would imagine that Australia will. Uh, will go through top of that group. Uh, Australia uh, play Pakistan tomorrow. Oh, sorry, on Friday. Uh, if they win that, they're essentially through. And obviously, a win for India have beaten Australia in, in one-off games and in, in a bilateral series recently. Um, but, you know, Australia are phenomenal, uh, as, as we all know. So... And to, to, uh, question for on this, Nicole. Um we know from the men's tournament in Dubai, it was uh, a bit of a shit show in terms of winning the toss, win the game pretty much. Is it the same uh, in the women's or is there is something being corrected or is nature? Uh, nature? We've seen a lot of, uh, we've seen a lot of wins by teams batting first uh, in the last few days. What I will say is that uh, we've had the last three games have all been the team batting first, scoring a pretty good total and the team batting second, getting bowled out for under a hundred. So right. it's hard to really read too much into uh into that. It has been a bit more of a mix in terms of uh in terms of batting first and, and bowling first. Partly that is because in fact a large part of that is the dew hasn't been such a factor. Uh we haven't seen really dewy conditions in the evening. And also particularly the Sharjah pitch has just been so slow to begin with mm -hmm. uh, that it's sort of it's almost eliminated any advantage you would get in winning the toss. Um, the Dubai pitch has been a little bit better uh, to the point where we've seen now Australia and India and South Africa all able to put on uh, put on good scores. Uh, South Africa have been so whereas Sri Lanka had been in brilliant form before the tournament and looked like a real rising force, um, albeit unlikely to get out of what is a very tough group with with Australia and India. They look like a team to watch. They have been really poor, and South Africa we got to the final. Uh, last year at home, uh, amazing uh, emotional semi-final win against England, uh, packed out Newlands, uh, South African great on the rise. They've really struggled in the last year. Um, a few big players uh, no longer part of the team. Lizelle Lee, Dane van Nierkirk, 
both giving up their Kentor contracts in slightly mysterious circumstances, Shabnim Ismail uh, as well. But South Africa have been really good so far in this in this tournament. And look, uh, it, it looks like, uh, as it was last time, that Australia and England and uh, and South Africa and India are the, are the best four teams in the tournament and will probably end up uh, <clears throat> being the semi-finalists. Um, India really needed this, not just the win, but the manner of the win, asserting their dominance, getting a uh, getting a solid uh, plan with the bat, and able to being able to impose themselves uh, with the bat. This is the kind of win at the right at the kind of time that will hopefully get them out of what had been a really nervy, panicky. Um, that New Zealand game was really quite baffling to watch. New Zealand did play really well, but India sort of allowed New Zealand to play really well and were uncharacteristically passive. They, yeah, they, yeah, that was a very bizarre performance in, in many ways um, on, on Sunday. I saw quite a bit of that game. Um, Curran, uh, we were getting trash talked by uh, our overlord, um, who he of Murali End. Um, do you have any words for him? Yeah, I mean, this was about <laughs> this was about as competitive as I expected it to be. Um, right. I know that Sri Lanka has been in better form and had been playing well, and uh, as Knuckle mentioned, did have a pretty riveting World Cup campaign. But when a little brother plays the big brother, when it matters the most, um, fluke's not going to happen twice. It's about what I expected. I am always going to eat my words and keep it a little bit more kosher, knowing that we still have Australia on the horizon. And I do think it's a little bit of a fun scheduling Kirk and it seems a little bit antithesis to the BCCI normally where the match against Australia, it'll be Australia's third match in Siraj and I think it'll be our first match there, which is a little bit doesn't give us the same innate advantage I'm typically used to the BCCI laying out for us but I did also see that uh, Australia goes Siraj, Siraj and then fly up to Dubai and then play back in Siraj two days later to play to India. <laughs> So now this is the second week in a row we've we've discovered a flaw with the BCCI. Last week, Knuckle rightly pointed out that they don't control Lord Indra, which is obviously problematic <laughs> in many ways. And now uh, India turning up and playing on a ground that the opposition will be well at home at. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully you know, that's a double-sided coin. <laughs> like surely. <laughs> or, or WG Grace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think in, I believe that India are guaranteed to play in Dubai for their semi-final. Uh, <laughs> there we are. There's so, my PCCI. So, so, which, which is which is which is pretty standard behavior. I'm not really sure who uh, has the advantage because you you would in, you would immediately think that India, on a, what has been an incredibly slow and difficult to score on wicket in Sharjah, would have the advantage. But then Australia have several superb spin bowlers as well and batters who are more able to take more batters rather who are able to take a slow pitch out of the equation if you think of the power of players like ash gardner annabelle sutherland uh and uh and beth mooney and Alyssa healy at the top of the order um like the, it's, it's uh, frightening when you read those names i'll be honest yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. halloween's not for a few weeks yet yeah absolutely grace harris is one of the biggest hitters in the world talia mcgrath who Batted at number eight against uh, against New Zealand. Annabel Sutherland batted nine against New Zealand, uh, which is bonkers, um, <laughs> really. Um, so, it, India have the game to beat Australia. They've done it before. If they play to their potential, they can trouble Australia. If Australia play anywhere near their potential, they'll beat anyone. Um, I think that is going to be a, a superb game, and it might, frankly, end up being. Uh, it is possible if other results go that way. Like if Australia really beat Pakistan heavily tomorrow and that net run rate drops, then we could end up in, in a in a situation where we're going into the uh, into the last into that game with with not actually that much potentially riding on it. New Zealand plays Sri Lanka uh, the day before and then finish off against against Pakistan. Um, so New Zealand would need a hell of a win though. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you can you can see a scenario whereby Australia really beat Pakistan heavily, so then uh, and then New Zealand, uh, then and, and but then Pakistan beat New Zealand, New Zealand beat Sri Lanka, and um, there are there is a set of scenarios where basically where India can lose to Australia and still go through because of the net run rate, assuming that they don't get beaten too heavily by by Australia, um, but. It would make things a lot easier, and they they've given themselves the, the the position where destiny is in their hands again, which it wasn't before this game, uh, and it makes that India Australia game an even more uh, exciting prospect than it already was. Yeah, I think um, many of us um, probably thought India would be good for a semi, um, maybe. Get into if they get into a final, who knows? But probably, I think the semi felt like the ceiling. Um, but maybe you know, after obviously, we're all constantly defeatist and, and really hopeful at the same time. So, after the first game is done, like you know, they should just be just, just disband completely. In fact, not even just the women's team, just disband. There's, there's no hope. Um, after New Zealand, but now suddenly, um, there is once again hope of, of uh, the women's team dominating the world until obviously the next game when it all perhaps will be upside down again. Um, guys, one thing I want to say, actually, I just remembered. Um, look, <clears throat> we talked last week about the IPL having more money, um, uh, which is great for the women's game. Um, we've talk, obviously, this World Cup is is kind of on the back of one last year. Again, great. Um, there are some absolutely brilliant players um, but the, the game is still developing. It's obviously not to the level of the men's game. You know, there are other sports like tennis where, yes, the men and women's game is different, but the women's game is as important as a spectacle as the men's. One of the things that doesn't necessarily help that is bad umpiring, especially when the umpiring is bending over to tie their laces while the, the ball is probably still in play. Um, and it's a run out. Um, what are your thoughts on those shenanigans? With New Zealand. Was that a little bit amateur? Was that maybe umpires thinking, you know what, Premier League referees in football do whatever the hell they like. Why don't we give it a go? It's a really bizarre situation, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> Deepthi Sharma is always at the end at the centre of something weird happening. <laughs> um th- these were ex- these are two pretty experienced umpires out there in the middle. Do the square leg umpire appear not to be watching? The umpire at the striker's end taking a hat. Just giving, uh, it. giving a hat to, to Deepthi Sharma, who who took the hat. Um, probably the, to be honest, probably the biggest error was what on earth was Amelia Kerr doing? Tr- what Amelia Kerr doing trying to run? Um, and well, and yeah. take a run that wasn't really on. Um, the whole thing was just. Yeah, but the thing is, if, it, if that if that comes off and Harman Priest not awake, then then it's a great run, and she's been really clever. Uh, I don't know. Like, if it would have, I don't know if it would have counted though, because. Um, because they might well have said, as they what the reason it, that Amelia Kerr wasn't given out run at is because the umpires uh said that over had been called. So, by the same token, presumably the run doesn't count either because it's been started after uh after uh over's over's been called. Um, no, no, sure, I, I know that, that that bit, um, I agree with, um, but it was more the fact that had I mean, I no one seemed to know that the over had been called. Or at least the batsmen didn't realise that, and they were standing pretty close to the umpires. Um, Curran, you said in the group the ball doesn't lie. Um, oh yeah, so you, she got out two balls later. Well, yes. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, uh, and, that, and, that, and then and then New Zealand hammered India anyway. So it, it sort of it's 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 kind of a good thing in a way that this game that didn't really make a difference to the result. Yeah, she she got out without scoring any more runs. Correct. I think it's, it's probably uh, you know, the important part of this as well. So justice was served. Yeah, I, I'm and I'm quite happy to then put it in the case of cricket just being really stupid. Like, yeah. uh, the, the, I was listening to the the BBC radio commentary um, was uh, had a the, cricket is the only sport uh, where something important can be decided on at the the exact moment uh, someone takes a hat from another human being. Yeah. Um, it was. I'm happy to to just place it in the uh, in the growing cricket is stupid pile. Yeah. Cricket's the only sport where you don't know if you're playing or not. 
But they had no idea if the ball was on. They have no idea if they're even running after it. So that, I don't think there's another sport where the players could even have a room for interpretation to know whether they're in play or not. I was, I was going to go to um, Sunday's men's T20, but from what you've just said, I think it would be right to start with today's game. And our boy, Washington Sundar, who got he, – he was done dirty. Zero balls – Based zero runs scored, and he just watched an over go by while tail enders were just trying to slog it. Fair enough. Ashdeep hit a beautiful six, which is a proper like shot. But just a word on on Mr. Sundar, please, Karen. Well, I mean, he got a wicket, so I guess he played his part. I think maybe he got two. Um, but he was clearly the the, the, the senior batter in that. Yeah, and, uh, but I mean, was... after we saw Ashdeep. When he needed one off, like three or whatever against Sri Lanka, went to bang on a six and got clean bowled and tied the match. Like you know what you're going to get with him now. It wasn't um, just him; it was the guy before him, uh, Chakravarti. I mean, yeah, you, I mean his. Like I said, Ashdeep's shot was a proper cricket shot. I wouldn't. Do, you can't knock it. Whereas I don't know what um, the, the other chap was doing. Two hundred and fourteen for seven in the last over of a T Twenty. But do you, you also? You think... should be. You should be. You should be severely disciplined for not trying to hit a six in that situation. Or well, you need to give Washi a chance. Do you think it's just an extent it. of uh, a new learning curve that we're just going to have to get used to under Gautam, where we don't necessarily, like, everyone on the tail end just sort of slogs and... You know, it, I maybe, guess yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. But, uh, maybe what he's, he's looked at Ben Duckett's strike rate being the highest in the world. He's thought, you know what? Sod this. This is not happening. What? What? There's no other... There's no other way you can play in that situation or should play in that situation. You swing as hard as you can. You run until you get run out. Uh, who cares about your 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 not out situation? Um, like th- it would be, it would be wrong and and a, a disciplinary offence to do anything other. Um, it, so you, basically, it, what you're saying is the, the umpires needed something to to be just outraged about, and that's what they chose in that over. And not the umpires, sorry, the, the the commentators. They needed something to be outraged by in that over because everything else is actually pretty great. Like you said, yeah. 214 odd. That's that's pretty much. Is. I mean, it is quite funny to come in at number eight, uh, and <laughs> and in with an over left and not face a ball, uh, yeah. and and see two two wickets go down. Um, <laughs> that just remind me of once in a um, in a club game, a school game or something. Like that. I was about twelve or something. But like, I came in at number six or seven. Didn't end the overs. I wasn't facing. And uh, saw saw my team lose four in four to lose the game. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I was stuck not not out of not balls faced. Oh. Good, good for your average, I suppose. So that would be great for my average. <laughs> um, um, thoughts on on um, we discussed a female ready earlier on. Thoughts on the male ready, uh, Karen? Because he obviously uh, his captain tried to take him out with a shot straight to his kind of, I think, or something. And then he must have just got a bit pissed off and thought, I'm going to score a half century now. Yeah, it was... And after a little bit of a, what's it called, a little stop-and-go start there, it wasn't necessarily the biggest, the most uh, free-swinging platform that we could have possibly had at the fourth spot. Mm-hmm. Um, leveled in, took that shot, and then just sort of turned around and seemingly turned on the ignition for the entire batting lineup after that. Because once once he got going, it was all capital <coughs> breaks. Um, for everybody yeah. else. Before that, um, it, it, they were struggling. Was it 50 for three or something? 60 for three, something around that? 41. 41 for three. There we go. Yeah, uh, and, he, and he was, what, 13 off 12 before he hit his first six? <laughs> off, the, mm-hmm. off the three hit, having yeah. already been had a catch dropped or, or given given a given a chance? Yeah. He, yeah. he looks, certainly looks, looks promising. Um, any other thoughts on the, on the men's game today? Not, I mean, look, let's be honest. We don't really care um, uh, about it. The, <laughs> it's just kind of nice, but the seven bowlers and each of them getting a wicket. I don't know if we'll see that again. Uh, super unique, just a fun. Like if you're just an in, a cricket purist, that's just a scorecard you can look back and just enjoy smiling at. Um, and, and you know, I'm a fan of just using as many bowlers as you can just for the hell of it. So yeah, and then um, yeah, I think the rest of it was relatively. Uh, Relatively just good cricket. There wasn't – the fielding was good. Hardly had a spectacular running catch. Just to share that, that's something that guy brings. And even uh, Prague from there, I think like two balls later – not two balls, two overs later, had a beautiful 
running save um, to save a boundary, which didn't really make a difference in the scheme of the match. But it is... It's about attitude, right? Mindset. Yeah, it, yeah it's just you... It's the young players playing their hearts out. For them, it's the biggest match they'll play in for this quarter or whatever. And it's been, it's been an exciting, I guess... Um, juxtaposition from that Sri Lanka series, which didn't necessarily go that well for us in the white ball. But it is, it's just such a deep lineup and everyone can slog you. And like, actually we just said hit that six, but he's not like an incapable batter, but Washi coming in at eighth is crazy. It's yeah, similar to how you just knocked off the Australian women's lineup when these people are coming in. It's just like... Yeah, and Var- Varun Chakravarti has been... Uh, sort of, he's probably not quite an all rounder, but he can bat a little bit, and he's batting at, at nine. I think it's in- really interesting to see the development of a potentially post Rohit Kohli KL middle order or top middle and top order. Um, because you could conceivably, I mean, there's it's going to be really, really interesting to see what India decide to do. Do they decide at some point to make the call that they are going to? to not have those three in the top order anymore because I was just about to say that because one of them's a wicket keeper. Yeah, I mean but you, then you you've got Rishabh Pant. Yeah. Uh, come back as well, yeah. Yeah, and, and or or I mean you would imagine that Shubman Gill and Yashasvi Jaiswal will end up opening in in T20 cricket. You've also got Rutherad Gaikwad sort of floating around the edges of this uh, of this mm. of this group, but you've got... you mean you mean against like um, probably higher ranked opposition? Well, I mean, sort of becoming the becoming a full strength becoming a full strength team. But what, what where India have struggled in in recent years in T Twenty cricket is that you've had the top order taking up too much or potentially taking too much time or getting scoring taking so much of the bulk of the of the, of the batting in the first, early parts of the tournament that the middle order doesn't get any chance to do anything. Mm. And so you end up with a very sort of weird... Um, you end up with a batting uh, a batting order which ends up very out of form. But you've got... You're collapsing against New Zealand in the semi-final. Well, or just just simply being <laughs> being undercooked. Or yes. you end up with a bunch yeah. of top order... Or you end up with a bunch of top order batters being shunted down into the middle order and all the pressure being on one guy to do the hitting. But if you look at yeah, Nitish Kumar Reddy, Rinku Singh, and Hardik Pandya, those guys are all uh, finisher types. Potentially. Yeah, and then Nitish took a couple of wickets as well, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. Which, and, which took uh, one... you know, and a seam bowling all rounder or another seam bowling all rounder is something that, that India have tried to find for a long time. You know, they tried with Shivam Dubey, they tried with Vijay Shankar. Uh, none of those guys are. Uh, Venkatesh Ayer as well. None hmm. of those guys are probably quite good enough with the ball to justify their. Uh, their place as, as as all rounders, arguably Nitish Kumar Reddy isn't quite either yet, but he's uh, but he's closer than any of those guys have have been, and it means that you don't have quite so much pressure on Hardik Pandya. Uh, yeah, I mean, look if the guy's taking a, a fifth, scoring fifty, taking a couple of wickets, um, you kind of say, yeah, um, that's kind of good enough, um, wouldn't you? Especially, I think that's what he's, he's. I mean, obviously, fairly early into his career as well. So, and, and if you look at the bowlers that India don't have in this series for various reasons, um, yep. well, there's know, no Jesse Anusaraj, right? Or Shami. Well, well Shami, yeah, as well, yeah. I mean, I was I was discounting Shami a little bit because I thought he's probably going to be phased out from T20, um, but yes, him as well. So you're not going to have Nitish Kumar already necessarily bowling full spells all the time. But if he can ship him with a couple of overs and be a hitter in the middle order, um, that 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 gives uh, Surakumar a lot more options as a uh, as a captain. Also, frankly, the fact that you can score it's not Bangladesh are an okay T Twenty team. Certainly, they've got bowlers here who have uh, who have done good things. The fact that you can score two hundred and twenty with Surakumar scoring eight is not something people would have necessarily considered possible uh, re- until relatively recently. Yeah, and then, the, the, I mean, the top three, well, the top two, yeah, the top three got just, like, less than 35 between them. So, um, but, you know, that's that's quite something. Uh, Sanju Sampson, I think, took the Rohit approach. He came in, hit it, got out. He's like, all right, cool. Um, I'm going to go chill, out, chill for a while, and then uh, I'll, I'll go keep for a bit. 10 off 7. Um, if memory serves me correct, he didn't particularly set the world on fire in the 
in the first match either. And 29, um, of, 29 of 19 in a low chase in the first in the first game very much did his job. Oh, sorry, yeah. I am completely not remembering this correctly. You're right. That was decent. Yeah. So I appreciate Shamar got out quickly in the other one. And, and credit to Tuscan. Tuscan bowled beautifully today. Two, yeah. two wicked 16 runs. He, he bowled disciplined, um, utilized the pitch, the inconsistency of the bounce. So as much as Sanju, we all want to see him get off and we know, pause. Uh, we all want to see him score a lot of runs and um, play the way that we've all know that he's capable of playing. There's also a tip of the hat to the to Tuskin, who bowled just good, really well maintained T20 bowling. Yeah, he did. Um, talking of batting and bowling, um, Mr. Pandya, Hardik, um, the current the floor is going to be all yours on this one, but. Obviously, uh, he did. You know, he did the business. Say, thirty was it? Thirty-two of I've got it here somewhere. Thirty-two of nineteen. 19. Yeah, um, two fours, two sixes. He was today was pretty much at a canter, um, but on Sunday, I mean, he he just the guy just had that bit of arrogance about him. Um, that you you know the shot I'm talking about, and some people are putting it down to just him being comfortable again. Some of it is kind of post divorce Hardik suddenly getting his swagger back, as in like, look at me, this is what you lost, um, all of that kind of stuff. Or is it just after the World Cup and the kind of the this is now the proper the first kind of proper series he's playing? He's kind of just having fun. What do you think, Aaron? I think the T20 World Cup win took a lot of the pressure off of him. Uh, well, he took a lot of the pressure off the World Cup as well. <laughs> True, but yeah, yeah, that's a double-sided sword, and it's a it's a great one. Um, but I think that that shot, the way you can even tell just watching his emotions, body language, how excited he got. There was a phase where he looked uh, sad and out of place, and just sort of going through the motions when he was out of form and India wasn't doing all that. Um, but now watching him these last two matches, he's been so excitable. It's been the fun Hardik, the original Hardik that we had before the injuries, seemingly. Um, where that emotion... just on on his injuries, it, what he's been through is no joke. Like he's yeah, been through he, some serious had, injuries. He, he he has had some really really horrifying back injuries mm -hmm. for a long time now, and like backs don't heal well <laughs> in general. There are. I mean, he, he was what you know walking in a brace. He's, we've probably all seen those videos, you know, yeah, especially on the medium pace. That, that sort of tension. And, power that you're bringing yeah. out and, and given and, and a fairly game, slim guy and how much of his game is built on that explosive power and that athleticism and the fact that he's able to you know those shots he plays where bowl of ball wide york and he's able to reach out and hit over the offside uh and in the field as well though that ability to move uh to move really quickly it takes a there were lot a few of those on, yeah there were a few yeah. of those on sunday and he's no yeah. kyron pollard he's not he's not like a massive guy but he still hits it far hits it well yeah and and putting all of that being able to trust that he can put all of that force and that explosive force through his back again must be huge. Mm. Well I mean look it's all down to Curran because Curran um inspired him to to <coughs> yeah, no, I, I, this kind of form. So I mean outside of the rehab I can't imagine there's a bigger leading factor in his career turnaround than me. Um just spending probably eighteen months incessantly um for lack of a better word hating him. Um <laughs> And I also went through that phase. I was looking back at my tweets. I was like, I remember there's a bowler that I used to really just sort of shit on them anytime they did one mistake and never want to see them again. Um, to my chagrin, it was Ershti. So, right. yeah, I really spotted out those two know-nothing talents early. Um, so, yeah, if if we want to give credit anywhere, I'll take it. I don't to be fair, Ershti was a, li a little bit... Um, well, let's just say he was learning, and we could see that he wasn't quite up to it. I think I, I have vague memories of final overs and just where he's just, no he's coming on you like, no, he's just going to give runs away. Um, but obviously, all of that kind of stood him in, in good stead. So who else are you hating on right now? Who else should we look out for? We're fun right now. We just won a World Cup. There's no one to hate. And so once we go through <laughs> these droughts where I start nitpicking yeah. all of these and Every bilateral series. I was going to say, you, before the Bangladesh series, you said that you'd never wanted to see KL Rahul play for India again, and then he comes in and does really well in the Test series. <laughs> we got that really wrong in that in, in that uh, preview because we said no KL. Uh, we watched so far for him, and 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 uh, the other bowler instead of the guy who played against Akash Deep. So 
I mean, yeah. They, they to be fair, Southampton did score a double ton uh, pretty soon thereafter. So we, we could have been there. But yeah, I mean, again, I'm up for hire. If anyone wants me to hate their players, they typically turn it on right after that. Um, Does it work if you do it on purpose? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, to an extent, maybe, because I hate a lot of the English cricketers. A lot. Well, so, so I was actually going to say this, right? We've been um, just mocking Ben Duckett, just not for his play, just for what he said. And and I, I would say I have to add that this is even Nasser Hussain ripped into him for his comments about Jeswell. Because Nasser Hussain was like, because he knows the struggle. And he, he knows that obviously as much as being an international player is is difficult and there you, you go through sacrifice and training everything is not the same in England versus a guy in India. Their, their level of struggle is different. I mean, and someone like Jess Wally, yeah, and his, Jess, oh, his yeah, story yeah. in particular, yeah. And that's the same rinsed him for that. Um, but we've been, like, obviously just throwing shade at him in, in, in a fun way just because of what he said. And now he's got the highest average of players over a 1,000 runs in the last five years. So, I mean... I had really, really well today in that test match in, in Multan with a dislocated thumb. On an autobahn, yeah. Yeah, did anybody not bat really well besides Ollie Ocho? Pope? Oh, that was last <laughs> night. <laughs> to be fair, heck of a catch from Emma Jamal. But again, you talk about scorecards, you'll have to see. Uh, I know this is the Cumbly Corner, but Zach Crawley, 78. Joe Root, 176, not out. Ben Duckett, 84. Harry Brook, 141, not out. Ollie Pope, second ball duck. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Pakistan also equally talked to ridiculous amounts. I, I was watching, I was looking at the thread on Reddit, and there was someone referring to the groundskeeper as, 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 I know this is a loaded word in the context of the country, but as the real terrorists. And I think this is down to like a comparison oh, to ter- terrorist football. Because really defensive football in, in the Premier League is referred to terrorist oh. football. Uh, right, well, so, I, it, it was pushing 40 degrees in Multan on the first day. I do wonder how much you can actually do. Yeah, but I think there's, there, is, uh, there are complaints that... Um, there are a few of these pitches being prepared in, in Pakistan. And I think out of all the reasons and all the discussions about India playing in Pakistan that I see and hear, um, this pitch, this game is probably the biggest reason and biggest uh, kind of cause for the BCCI to say, no, we're not sending an Indian team there. I'm not putting Jussie through that um, in, in a in a, in a one day, in a, t- in a test match, sorry, or even show me because just just please had a fair few injuries. I'm certainly not putting Hardik through that either. If he s- somehow manages to make it into a, a, a test game, that's good. That's ruinous for bowlers. Yeah, go on, go but on. we send you Vera, put your hands up, going like, what yeah, we put we send Veer out there. His average is back above fifty. Send him there for a quick three test tour on those pitches. Oh, Get his dude. test average above fifty. Virat and Kohli, Virat and Gotti going there would be insane. So obviously uh, you've probably seen a clip of Irfan Patan talking. Anytime we played Pakistan, we just wound it up. We just wound up Gotti and let him go. Um, and there's obviously there's a historical reason now. For, for those of you who don't know, um, Gautam Gabriel's grandfather was a refugee from Pakistan during partition. So there is like yeah, there is a reason for that. I think Kohli's him family and, also. Even every other Sindhi in Punjabi, by the way. But um... was, well, this is my point. I think Kohli, Kohli's family also came from um, Punjab at that point. So yes. Yeah. All right, fuck me. Send them over. Send, fuck me. No, 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 yeah, right. send them over. Let, let, there is let, growing, let there is there is growing calls for having an India-Pakistan Test series in a neutral country. Uh, I think England have actually sort of semi-formally offered for that. Oh, really? Why? And everyone rinsed England for that. I remember that. They were like, no, it's you, you lot. Uh, I mean, I've been jokingly in the past on what we used to do, um, the the India stuff from early end, I, I refer to India Pakistan as the Radcliffe Cup um, because of the Radcliffe line. But um, it would be hilarious to have a game like that hosted here. Probably it would be Edge Baston, but... We don't... Mate, it would be, yes, it would. It would I mean, be, look, England, Scotland, level, rugby is called the Calcutta Cup, so you know, just, just... The, the levels of historical irony would be quite, it would be, would be off the scale, <laughs> but it would also be a hell of a series. Yes. Would um, it? Would it? Would we not just rinse them? It would be a hell of an occasion. No, absolutely. Yeah, it would okay. be a hell of an occasion. Yeah, right, fair. <laughs> I think. Look, um, I was saving India-Pakistan conversation for for the future, but I think probably, um, look, there are, there are a number of reasons why. It, it, it doesn't happen now, and um, I know a lot of people blame Modi, but I think if memory says me correct, it actually kind of stopped around 2008, which was Congress government, and then obviously it didn't get any better after the BJP came in. Um, 
in terms of politics, I was having this conversation with actually uh, a mixed race um, black guy um, who's British. Um, and it was just a, at what point do you say politics and, and, and sport are different? Um, do we then apologise to South Africa for, for not letting them play during apartheid? I think the answer would be, be no. Um, I'm not sure. That and, and, I, don't, I don't think those two are particularly equivalent. <laughs> I'm going to talk in, no, in, in context. That line on its own makes no sense. I'm talking about the broader concept of, of politics and, and sport. Um, Russia not getting included in the World Cup, uh, in sorry, the Olympics. And the reason is not that from the Indian point of view, Pakistan are sending across militants. That's that's what I'm trying to say in that sense. That's, that's how I the think... Indians view it. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm saying that's how the Indians view it. It, 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 is, it is how they view it. And it's... it's, it's... That is the narrative that it is convenient and expedient for certain parts of the Indian political system uh, to put about, and it's become mainstream. It's become the mainstream view, I, I would I would say, in India. Well, um, I mean, that, and it, uh, certainly would you, in the would you, would you not say that it's been it's been historically kind of the situation though? Like even if we look at back at, uh, over the last sort of fifteen years, pre BJP, generally. Uh, I mean, let's take 2008, for example. It was said that the, the handler of the guys, guess where he was sitting? Um, even recently, um, who was claiming responsibility for, you know, Pawama, the chap is sitting in, in Pakistan. The, 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 it, it being, there's, there's a kernel of, uh, of a factual basis to all of it. Um, yeah, and then, look, that's it, not to discount that that the propaganda machinery in India uh, and certain news channels don't it, hype it up. I completely agree with that as well. It it's become, you know, it's almost a, it's a cliche to say when you bring up something like this on a podcast that there should be a whole other podcast, but clearly this one actually should. <laughs> it was um, meant to be. I don't know how we, we, we've meandered onto this, but but, but um, <laughs> what, the the status of of. Uh, the status of Pakistan as not just a a neighboring country with which there are historical tensions, but the enemy has has uh, we are in that phase of the relationship between India and Pakistan now, and it has meant that I think where, as it relates to sport, what it has meant is that the BCCI, who for all of their faults are not short to recognize commercial slow rather to recognize commercial opportunities, have mm. not dared push this. Because it is not polit the political climate is not conducive to it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's also sorry, go on. We saw a few years ago, um, maybe ten years ago, that uh, the then head of the of the Pakistan of the PCB, I think it's Shadi Khan at the time, um, one of the more forward thinking uh, Pakistan cricket administrators, tried to meet uh, with uh, with the PCCI repeatedly in Mumbai. And was blanked. Uh, didn't BC Roger, didn't Roger, Roger Binney go over there recently and was very um, talking about how great the hospitality was as well? Uh, am I, am I... I can't quite remember. I saw uh, something about that. Um, but we, we've had situations where there has been an attempt at rapprochement and it, from from the Pakistani from the Pakistan side, and you, you know the BCCI. There's a reason that every every ICC tournament draw is. I think the ICC have kind of admitted now, uh, manipulated so that India and Pakistan play each other in the group. Absolutely, I mean, Ramiz Raja it was was famously on record uh, saying that, that that Indian businesses fund Pakistani cricket through advertising and through the way the money kind of flows, uh, <laughs> he, uh, which upset people. I think he was the head of the PCB at that time. Yeah, and, and as they do with cricket, more or less everywhere. Um, yeah, that's, that's not uh, a particularly uh, unique thing. So. Um, but the financial draw and the appetite for India-Pakistan games is is very obvious. All things being equal, or, or without the without the political climate being quite so uh, toxic and and of a of a tenor where it's not just a country with whom there are historical tensions very real historical tensions and historical trauma that goes back a long, long way and has been deepened by, by some of the things you've been talking about, but has gone to enemy status. Uh, that means that the BCCI are not able 
or feel that they are unable to to push for what would otherwise be an extremely lucrative um, and extremely sought after um, sporting relationship in the same way that you see that there are contrast this for example to FIFA's attitude towards Qatar and Saudi Arabia and other countries with where there are uh, where there are there's a lot that you can say politically mm-hmm. uh, but the commercial profit motive has overridden those uh, those yep. concerns and it is it, I find it interesting that that hasn't happened yet in 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 cricket and other situations aren't quite analogous but the fact that the fact that the political has been able to override the commercial for so long is very very unusual in today's sporting climate just to just to finish this off i think that there is a li- there is a difference between uh what has happened with russia which is essentially the international sporting community turning on russia as they did again on south africa that is a little different than what is essentially a bilateral dispute yeah which is why they play play in in, in these um international tournaments yeah absolutely and it'll be, be fascinating to see what happens if the if they ever get to the final of world test championship aren't they, yeah aren't they well, they, i think the champions trophy from pakistan they, right now they're well they're, 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 so they're now talking about India playing their games not in Pakistan, but the rest of the tournament being played in Pakistan, uh, and that and that sort of fudge, which I think they've had with Asia Cups in the past, which yeah, or seems... oh, just all moved to Dubai. Um, and I think the uh, what I find slightly interesting is nowadays the the argument is around safety of the players. I mean, I, I can't comment on that. I'm not sure that is the main reason why. No, they, they get, they, you see the security that teams get when they go to Pakistan now. And even frankly, yeah. in the even even then, frankly, there's a, a there's a brilliant book by uh, called Pundits from Pakistan by Rahul Bhattacharya about the 2003 uh, tour. And Indian players were able to mix more than like they would get invited to people's houses for dinner. But well, they yeah, were still, I think that they were still famously. in they were still in incredible levels of security. Mm-hmm. Even they, even then, those you know those tours were. Box office, um, they were great. Um, probably one of my favourite Pakistani yeah. players is Yunus Khan. Um, great batsman, played with a smile. Um, the point I wanted to actually make when I started off on this was actually, <laughs> it's probably the be- the best of both worlds is knowing that that um, India are going to play the uh, going to play Pakistan in any IC to- ICC tournaments is actually just beat them, um, and that <laughs> that kind of just carries it through. I would. Um, I think my understanding is a little bit is that it's not necessarily just about historical tensions from what I see. Um, and and I, I'm hearing, or well, what I've read is whenever there's something that happens, particularly in Kashmir, um, when a soldier dies, they're like, well, we shouldn't be playing against them in anything. Um, at the same time, you have to, especially in international tournaments. And it's not like England not playing against Zimbabwe or something and, or New Zealand and it's forfeiting points. That's That's kind of Kind of a nonsense, if you if you agree. There were also people talking about India or um, boycotting Bangladesh in this series because there's you know stuff going in Bangladesh with, with Hindus and Christians getting killed, but that doesn't actually help anything, really. Ever since I've really sort of been kind of old enough to have an opinion on it, I've always been of the opinion that like the idea that sport and politics don't and shouldn't mix is just a it's just a nonsense. Uh, it's it's just not it's not possible. Like, forget whether it's desirable or not. It's not it's not possible. Like we live, sport is part of a sport is an inherently political thing, particularly when you're talking national national sport. Um, like the, the idea that, that cricket, the game, you know, the soft power arm of the British Empire, um, should should now pretend to be apolitical is just ridiculous, just laughable, frankly. And so you Team have to is what I'm going to say to you. And so you have to kind of you have to come up with some way of dealing with the fact that you are that you're going to that you're going to run into political political problems. But I, I find it really interesting that the that the that the political and the the national ten, the nationalist tensions and the 
those um you know th those very real traumas have been allowed to override the commercial imperative in a way that we really just don't see anymore in sport yeah we really don't um uh, did you think if the ipl had not been around hadn't been the the money maker it's, it is that, that maybe that would be that would have been the case because then you've got to rely more on these kind of uh, yeah maybe because it, it gone yeah, that maybe maybe um india i mean there were pakistani players in the first year of the of the ipl uh Shari Bakhtar um, and, and a few others played in the in the first year of the uh, of the IPL and yes I think the fact that India don't need Pakistan financially uh yeah and also I think uh, on, a, on a political level they're looking to decouple anyway but uh, so that's probably the, the financial part what you said yeah, um, fascinating know. if China ever get good at cricket to see what happens and then then I think it's curtains for everyone <laughs> it's generally yeah if China and the USA become good at cricket then like India who yeah. Current's working on it, are you Yeah, yeah you'll say we talk to some, so we're not bad. USA, so. USA. Uh, but yeah, uh, all that Belt and Road money is going to start getting, uh, going to start getting, uh, you know. You know Ironically, cr we started... Cricket cages, we, cricket cages in Kigali. We started <laughs> talking about this on this tangent by talking about a road in, in Pakistan, and, and here we are. I'm going to call them as a great way to, to, to round it off. Um, gents, uh, shall we get back to the, the cricket after we um well you go back to the cricket that's that's, that's coming there's another test uh, 2020 uh match against bangladesh um to come at some point this week um and then uh obviously aside from the, 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 the women's world cup there will be a new test series uh proper cricket will be back new zealand are arriving um having shown sri lanka how not to do it um and we're going to cover that on the next episode. Have you got any thoughts on it before we, well, ahead of next week when we do it properly? Um, and obviously, Kane Williamson's groin is uh, giving him some problems. I think he's doing taking doing a David Warner and doing too many uh, dances to South Indian songs. Yeah, uh, Kane yeah. Williamson will not be part of the first test. He's not going to. In fact, uh, he's still he's still in New Zealand. In 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 fact, um, so. The uh, Hong Kong's finest, Mark Chapman, has been been added to the added to the <laughs> squad. Uh, Tim Southey stepped down as captain after they lost uh, uh, to Sri Lanka. Tom Latham's going to take over as uh, as captain. Uh, Michael Bracewell, the, the quite impressive spin bowling all rounder, is only going to be available for the first Test. Uh, he's going back to to uh, for for paternity leave. Um, but yeah, sort of. What well, good you will you will now end up with a situation where um, a New Zealand team that looks on paper quite quite good but have really really struggled in this WTC cycle um, are now coming off having been having been beaten quite badly by by Sri Lanka coming into uh, coming into a series with uh, with India uh, Ajaz Patel uh, who obviously. Was that was the big headline at last time? Still, by the way, has never taken a wicket at home uh, in in Test matches. Is um, he like a? Is he like a, a, a? Well, I mean, he's not taken any. Whereas Jesse had taken some. Is he like a spin version of Bumrah, where Bumrah was just killing it abroad, but never really played internally? Uh, the classic horse of the courses, isn't it? Yeah, he doesn't really yeah. doesn't really play. Uh, I I imagine Ravi, imagine Sorry. Ratchan Ravindra will get quite a will get a good reception. Uh, when he's, absolutely. Uh, when when he's uh, during during this series, um, India have yet to name their squad. Uh, so we'll we'll hopefully time our next podcast for for after the the squad gets announced for that first test. I wouldn't imagine too many changes from from the one against Bangladesh. It doesn't look like Mohammed Shami will be fit. Uh, Karan, who let's 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 pay devils up, not devils up. Let's just be nice to the other team. Um, who do you want to see do reasonably well? I'm talking like 45 and then chopped on, um, or you know, a couple of nice wickets, but they still get slapped around. Rachin, uh, you know, Rachin, 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 yeah. A little Sachin Dravid love child, yeah, no doubt. It's normally the thing I remember. <laughs> it just sort of throws me back to, uh, should we say IPL, not IPL, but 2020 World Cup? Um, wanted Vikram Solanke to do quite well. Um, it just kind of happens. You want the Indians to do. You know, half well, um, but to keep their team, you know, solidarity and all that. 
uh, uh, Ravi Bapara and all the rest of it, we don't particularly want them to to, to have a blinder, or if they're having a blinder, have it in a losing course. Uh, you also got you also in the beer saying Saudi to to look at. <laughs> He's the man, yeah. And in terms of India, do you have any further thoughts on the, the remaining twenty twenty, uh, Karan? Um, and I mean, is there some kind of wild stuff you'd like to see? And then obviously, then uh, the, the New Zealand Test as well. Um, uh, the two twenty, no, no, whatever, just demolish him. I don't want to stress this. Is- Hour and a half, nah, just like a good little breakfast breakfast match. Um, yeah, I don't really give a shit about win or lose. Um, New Zealand series, yes, Vera, that's what I want. I want him to have his master class and coming into form. The Vera that we know, shout out to Joe Root today for becoming the highest England test run taker. And I heard there's some like weird media rights or something where like England fans like can't even watch it or see it. Or no, no, what the, the series is on Sky. Oh, okay. There's, There's some guy on Twitter here. said where you can't like tweet. The... No, no. Oh, no hang on, which uh, one? Uh, I thought I, th- I thought uh, TNT had in here all the Indian rights. I was talking about the England match. Um, oh, England, yeah, the England all always on Sky. Yeah, but now after after Joe Root is spectacular and whatever, and the world is on their knees for him, um, I want that for Virat. I want that back for Virat. I want him to be the Virat that we know. No seven stump jabs onto off stump or outside edges. Something just to figure out that we know and love. That's really all I'm fingers crossed for. I think we should win. No Kane. They're in a bit of turmoil. They're they're still figuring their shit out from top to bottom, I think. So I, I expect to win. I assume a win. Uh, beyond that, I want it to be on Vero's back. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think any Indian fans would really argue with you. <clears throat> uh, right, I think we should leave it there, gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> that's all for this week. Um, in the next episode, we will, of course, delve deeper into the uh, Indian squad for the Test Series uh, with New Zealand because that will be announced, as Knuckles said. Um, I've been joined, I'm Super Joshi, joined by Knuckle Bande and Karameta today. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit follow wherever you find us. And, and tell people about us because we're amazing. This is the Kumble Corner saying, bye bye.